Good morning all. Yesterday I put this together. It's a, a Nokia 5110 LCD display attached to an Arduino Uno. And the graphical elements on here, the numbers and the words and the round cornered rectangles, are from a library called U8G. So this is for an upcoming project where I want two numerical data fields with quite a large number of digits and I've got space here for uh, eight I think, I'm only showing six at the moment, but I wanted them reasonably well presented and also labelled so that you can see what the two number fields relate to. Now this is just a dummy, um, I've just got uh, a number here which is being derived from the micros function, so this is showing the loop time in microseconds, it's about uh, 290 milliseconds. Now there is a delay of 250 milliseconds in there, so the software is actually taking 40 milliseconds to execute. And uh, I've chosen this Nokia 5110 display because it looks just as good outdoors in very bright sunlight as it does indoors with the LED backlights turned on. So today I want to go through the steps that I took to get uh, this working with an Arduino a Nokia 5110 and the U8G lib. So I knew right from the off that I wanted to use this uh, U8G library. This is at uh, github.com forward slash Ollie Krauss forward slash U8G lib. And that's because it supports a large number of fonts. It has a good selection of built-in graphical elements that you can use. And it also supports a very large number of uh, display driver chips including OLEDs and this uh, Nokia 5110 LCD display. So the first thing to do is to download the zip and then install it as a library in Arduino. And then if you go to examples and then all the way down to the bottom to U8Glib, I've still got an old one in there, and then up to the Hello World example, um, this is where I started to build this program. Now in here there are a lot of comments at the top here and then there are a very large number of constructor calls for all the different display types and the one we want for the Nokia 5110 is, where is it? This one here, the PCD8544 because that's actually the chip that the Nokia 5110 display uses now normally you would just uncomment this line and leave all the others in, but I'm going to strip them all out so that it's much easier to see what's going on. Now I also found I was able to strip out everything in the setup function, so none of this was actually required, so I'm also going to do that to get this down to the bare minimum. And uh, all that we're left with is this, an include uh, for the UHG library, a constructor call uh, here, uh, a draw function and then an empty setup function and a loop function and I'm even going to move the contents of the draw function into the loop just to make it even simpler still. And uh, that's all we're left with, let's see if it compiles and runs. And uh, yep that works, hello world on the display or mostly on the display uh, but it shows that the program is working and talking to the Arduino and the Arduino is talking to the Nokia display. Well now I've disconnected the display from the Arduino because I want to take things back one step further and uh, use the Hello World program that I've cut down to actually work out how to connect the 5110 display to the Arduino. And the main clue is here in the constructor call. There are five pin numbers which refer to the uh, signals which go to the display. We've got S clock goes to pin D13 mozzie to 11, chip select to 10, address A0 to 9 and reset to 8. So let's take a look at those on the back of the display. Well the names on the back of the display don't quite tie up with the names in this string here. Um, we've got clock and that's a reasonable guess for S clock and in fact that's correct. Now mozzie doesn't appear on here at all but in fact it's uh, D in, data in. And the reason for that is that Mozzie stands for Master Out Slave In. Well, the Arduino is the master, and this display is the slave. 
So data in is Mozzie. Mozzie is the name of the standard hardware SPI. I'll come to that in a moment. Okay, chip select goes to pin 10. Well, we don't have a chip select, we have a chip enable, but that's a pretty good match. And in fact, that's correct. And another one that doesn't quite work is A0. Uh, A0 actually connects to uh, DC. Now, A0 means address line zero. And it's the address line or the line which selects between two addresses and they are data and commands. And in fact, DC here is data when it's in one state and command when it's in another. So although it doesn't make immediate sense, A0 does go to DC and reset is on here RST, so that's no problem. So with that all deciphered, this is the table that I'm gonna to use to connect the Nokia to the Arduino. Uh, first one, clock to D13. Well, on the back of here, uh, clock is pin five, so that's green. Uh, next, D in goes to 11. Uh, D in is uh, yellow, so that's number four, pin four. Uh, chip enable to 10, so chip enable is red, red to 10. DC to nine, DC is the third one, orange. And RST, which is brown on here, brown goes to pin, what was it, eight. So let's put brown on pin eight. Okay, so now all I need is VCC ground. And then the other one is light, which on this particular display, turns the lights on when you put it to ground. So let's put VCC and ground on first. So I've connected my VCC and ground wires to suitable connection points on this array of uh, power connections here. And then uh, this light, which was pin seven, that's purple, uh, also goes to ground if I want to turn on the LEDs. So you can see that by connecting that to a ground pin, that one will do, the LED backlights come on. So there we are with the display all connected up and a simple hello world, uh, but now I want to do something a bit more interesting. So one problem is that uh, hello world doesn't actually fit on the display. So I'm gonna split this into two lines, hello on the first line and world on the second. Now this draw string command uh, uses coordinates for X and Y. Uh, X at zero means right over on the left-hand side of the display, and then Y starts at line 22, but that's the bottom of hello, so you need to leave enough space to get to the height of the uh, characters on the display. So if I leave hello at line 22 and put world at line, I don't know, 42, let's see what that does. So here are the changes. Uh, draw string hello at position 0, 22 and draw the string world, exclamation mark, at position 0, 42. Let's compile that and see what gets on the display. And uh, well, that's worked. You've got hello there and world immediately beneath it. At least everything now fits on the display, but I don't really like that font. So let's see if we can find uh, something a bit nicer. And uh, that's where this comes in handy, the large number of fonts. So let's click on that and see what we've got. Well, now we've got all sorts of fonts from four pixel height, tiny, tiny stuff, five pixel, six pixel, seven pixel, and all the way up to the much larger characters uh, at the end, right the way up to 42 pixel and 49 pixel. Well, this display is only 48 pixels high, so these certainly aren't gonna be any use. So let's pick the one that I used in my example. So in my program, I've used this uh, five by seven font for the labels and this 10 by 20 font for the large numbers. So let's have a look at where they are. So here's the uh, five by seven font. It's actually a six pixel high X11 font. And the uh, 10 by 20 font is actually 13 pixel high, also an X11 font. So let's try this uh, 10 by 20 font. Let's click through to that. Um, okay, I'll bring the camera out a little bit. Uh, so the copyright on this is public domain font, share and enjoy, well that's good news. So if we go down, we've got all the different sizes, uh, the five by seven, which I'm using, but let's go to the 10 by 20, I think it was, where's that? And you can see the mass of information on fonts. Uh, so yes, I can use this 10 by 20. Uh, it's called UHG underscore font underscore 10 by 20. 
Uh, here are the, the characters and also the numbers and there are also graphics and all manner of other stuff. So I'll just change my sketch to uh, 10x20 and then compile that and upload it and see what we get. So a similar result but uh, just in a different font. Okay, well now let's do something interesting like uh, draw some boxes. So UHG lib documentation and tutorials and then at the bottom reference UHG lib reference manual and in here are all the function calls that you can use for every conceivable type of uh, graphical thing and this is what we want to do draw a box in fact we don't because I think that is a filled frame yes it is down there so we want to draw a frame so here it is uh, draw frame and the example is UHG dot draw frame and then four parameters X and Y for the start point and the uh, what would it be horizontal and vertical size so let's draw a full size box so the start point will be 0 0 and it will be uh, 84 in the X and 48 in the Y so here it is UHG draw frame start point is 0 comma 0 and the size is 84 by 48 because that's the number of pixels on a Nokia 5110 display and uh, the result is this, we've got the uh, full size frame that surrounds the whole uh, active pixel area. It's crashed into the lettering a little bit here. Actually it hasn't quite, uh, it looks like the lettering has a single row of pixels gap on the left hand side because the full width of the H left hand stem is actually not sitting on that line but uh, that's just a quirk of the font I guess. Now what about um, checking that everything is in the right place relative to the pixel grid? There is a command called set contrast where we can darken all this up and it makes it much easier to see the pixels that are actually off. So here it is, set contrast, assign a new contrast value, 0 to 255. Now it does say not all displays support the setting of contrast values, but this one does. Normal value I've set is 128, but I'm going to darken it to 150 just so we can see the pixels. So the result of that is this, and it's just darkened the pixels a bit so that I can see where the actual pixel array is so that I can line things up and get things in the place that I want them. Okay, let's uh, change this outer frame to a round cornered rectangle. So that means drawing an R frame, a round cornered frame, or an R box if you want it filled in black. Now uh, there is an extra argument at the end, so I need one more parameter, which is the radius for the four edges. So I'm going to change this to draw R frame, let's put the R in, and then add an extra parameter at the end of that line, uh, comma 3, which is the radius of corners, uh, 3 pixel radius. Let's try that. And that's given us a nice round cornered uh, rectangular box around the edge. You can see how that lines up with the pixel map if I tip it so that you can see the higher contrast uh, pixels on the grid. But that looks about right for presenting data in a nice way. Now I'm going to switch to my version of the program now. Uh, all I've done is draw four R frames, so round cornered rectangular frames with various different sizes and positions. One for my uh, data number one, one for data one label, a data two label and my data two field. Then I write the words data one and data two into these positions here. I had to uh, fudge these uh, several times, probably wrote this program to the display about 30 times to the Arduino to get everything in the right position. Well that's done with these drawstring commands. Uh, that's done with the 5 by 7 font, so my labels are quite small. Then I switch to the 10 by 20 font and I draw two numbers. They're actually the same thing, it's just this micros minus last micros, so it's actually the time it takes to execute the whole loop. Uh, there's 250 milliseconds of delay in there as well. And the result is what I started with, which is this uh, four round cornered rectangular frames. I put one right at the top, one right at the bottom, and then I had to put my two labels in the middle, uh, one sort of upper to the left and one down to the right to make it all fit. But I particularly wanted this large numerical font so that my numbers are going to be large and easy to film with my uh, phone camera. Now there is something to note here. If you look at um, the uh, B 
build information, the compile information, it says the sketch uses 11,000 or 11 and a half K bytes, which is 35% of the entire program storage space, uh, which of course is 32 K minus 512 bytes for the bootloader. Now that is a very large number and we can get that a lot lower by using fewer fonts. If I use the 5x7 font, both for the labels and also for my numbers, then I've only used one font in the whole program. And you can see down here that the amount of memory used now is only 8K. Well, that's 3K less than before. So every uh, different font you use will use up large amounts of memory because fonts are large. Uh, and on the display, of course, that looks pretty stupid because the numbers are... Uh, ridiculously small, but you can see that the label, the font I'm using for these two labels is now the same as the font for the numbers, and that does make a massive saving in memory usage. But I'm willing to sacrifice 3k of memory uh, to make the display look prettier, so back to the 10 by 20 font, and back to 11k of memory used. Now just a quick word about the SPI interface. We're using S-Clock and Mozzie on pins 13 and 11. And these can't be changed because this is hardware SPI. So we need to use the uh, correct pins on the Arduino to get these signals to come out. Chip select, A0 and reset could be moved around onto different pins. But let's just see why these have to be fixed. So here's the AT Mega 168-328 pin mapping. And you can see here that uh, the S-Clock pin and the Mozzie pin are defined on pins 13 and 11. So they have to be used if you're using hardware SPI. If you're using software SPI, uh, using commands like shift out, then these pins can be reassigned. But this uh, library uses hardware SPI. So that was a quick introduction to using the uh, Nokia 5110 LCD, monochrome LCD display, and the UHG graphics and font library on an Arduino. And uh, I will copy this program, this sketch, to Hastebin and put a link to that in the description and also links to the UHG uh, lib uh, on GitHub and also the Arduino pin mapping and anything else that I feel is relevant to this program. Cheerio!